We are back with a very, very exciting episode of the iDoctor UK podcast. I hope that you are all doing well. What a week. What an absolutely game-changing week. So, obviously, I've been talking about it for a long time, iOS 18. I've been talking about Siri. We've not got that yet. I've not got the 18.1 beta yet either, so I've not tried it out. But I have been playing around a little bit, but not a lot, with the new parts pairing. What an amazing difference that's going to make. So now in iOS 18, you will be able to swap parts without going through Apple's self-repair service. This is massive. This is absolutely huge. That means that if you get a genuine battery, you can put it into another phone, as long as it's not lost or reported lost by the sound of it. Locked is okay, iCloud locked is okay, but reported lost is not okay. This is all developing news, so it's maybe next week I'll tell you something different, but from what I've heard so far, lost or stolen will not work. Genuine from iCloud will work. Same with screens, same with cameras. I tried to do Face ID yesterday, but I didn't have a part where I could verify worked. I don't think that Face ID will, will as in front camera, will pair. But I have seen reports that proximity sensors will pair which is great for like models like the iPhone 12. I know I always bang on about how that's probably the easiest soldering job around, but if you take a genuine proximity sensor and ear speaker flex from an iPhone 12 and put it onto another one, reports are that it will work. It will allow face ID. You just have to go into settings. You have to fi finish the calibration. It's very, very simple. Anybody could do it. It's so exciting. What more could we ask for? It'd be nice if aftermarket parts did the same thing, but that's not going to happen. I've got a funny feeling that refurbers are going to be very busy. Very good feeling about that. So people who are doing refurbishment on iPhone displays are going to be busy people. The other thing is the fog displays. Now, from my understanding, a fog display has the original Apple Flex on it with either an aftermarket display or aftermarket glass, but I might I might be wrong there. But I know for sure that it has the original flex on. So that's the important bit, the flex. If it has if it's an aftermarket display with a with an original cable, it's gonna work and you're gonna be able to pair it and it's gonna be great. So yeah, that is super, super exciting news this week and I feel good for once in my life. I feel happy. What more could we ask for? What more could we ask for? It's going to be interesting to see who's selling stolen stuff though, isn't it? That That's one thing that I'm for sure interested in. Other than that, I mean, we don't have any problem with most customers who uh, will sort of tolerate the non-genuine part warnings anyway. Batteries is going to be a funny one. My thinking on batteries is that we, for example, take out... I don't, I don't know if this works. I don't know if it works reprogrammed with the JCV1, but this is my theory. We take out a battery from a pull unit. We re-weld a new cell to it. Then we reprogram that battery using the JC tool and then stick it into another phone. So it doesn't go back into the original phone. It goes into another phone. So you've always got some flex cables, some original BMSs available. I think that that might be the way around batteries. I don't know for sure yet, but that's my little theory. I've not tried it. This week I will try it and I'll report back next week. Keep an eye on the other socials because I'll be talking about it there as well. So, yeah, how exciting. Batteries is going to be a big one for us because we weld every single battery from the XS, XR, XS Max onwards. So that's hopefully going to save a lot of time. I imagine that you'll start getting batteries, like you'll send batteries off for refurb. Like the way that you do screens, they'll go to China, They'll China will buy the flexors and they'll manufacture batteries with original BMSs. So that will be, that'll be exciting, not only for the quality. Like, I always find that it's rare that the cells are the problem. Cells are, are fairly consistent, and they're fairly basic, aren't they? They're just a bit of lithium-ion sort of stuff wrapped up together. But it's usually the BMS what is the, what, what defines the sort of quality. So, yeah, original, original BMS with uh, a new cell. I'm all for that. Really, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm just excited. I knew it was going to happen as well. I knew it was going to happen, but we just didn't know exactly how it would happen. And then in terms of displays as well, so I'm just sort of thinking, I know I said about the fog displays, I think that the way that displays are made will change now. So back when we used to have the iPhone 11 screens, when the iPhone 11 first came out and we were getting iPhone 11 screens that had, were offering non-pop-up displays and that kind of thing, I think that's going to happen again. I really hope it does. So, yeah. 
Exciting. And so Nathan's just made a good question. I don't know if you heard it, but I'll start again. So Nathan's question was, what happens if you fit a pull display onto a device and then it gets reported stolen or lost or insurance, whatever, six months down the line? I don't know the answer to that yet. Time will obviously tell. But I think that the way that it'll work, it's at the time of calibration. So I don't think it's going to be constantly checking in on that part to see if it's still genuine. I think it'll be at the time of calibration. So yeah, I reckon that's gonna be the one there. I don't know, that's something we need to look at. I put the question on the group yesterday. Let me find it, because I did promise on, on the question that I would uh, read out what I read. I didn't get as much response as I'd have, I'd have liked really, but hey ho, post by me. Uh, so it was really a plug for the podcast. As some of you may know or may not know, I do a weekly podcast. I was asking for suppliers in, import and all that. Somebody asked what the podcast was. Matt Dallahousie says, Ollie, do you think it's worth repair? Is putting out a statement to try and cover our asses a little bit if, pre if previous repairs start to go wrong because of the update? So yes, that was one that I wanted to talk about. What I've noticed in just about every major update from Apple, so like iOS 17, iOS 16, is something's going to go wrong and you're going to get people knocking at doors saying, I've updated my phone and something's happened to it. Usually it's solved by the update, what follows, but there's always there's always something in there. There's always some sneaky trick. Oh yeah, that so that brings on the question of these aftermarket displays, what you add the screen IC to. People who have got no warning message on the screen may wake up after the iOS 18 update and it's got a screen warning. So that's going to be interesting. And then... Mr. Tai Wong said, Ollie, what we do know is that when installed a pulled genuine battery and used the new magic in iOS 18 RC version to complete the battery repair and downgrade back to iOS 17, the battery health will still show up as a genuine battery. So that's that's pretty cool. So you could up, up briefly, because 18 is going to be out in one, two, three, three days, you're not going to be able to downgrade from there. Once uh, once this RC version goes away, then you're not going to be able to downgrade. But it's just so exciting. I think we talked enough about that. In other news in the shop this week, we've had like a mad spring clean. Like the shop is so tidy. Everywhere's tidy. If you see if you've seen any of my videos, there's always one comment mentioning how messy the place is. We've just like blitzed through the whole place. We we've been organized. I've I've been banging on about how disorganized I am and how like when we were away, the summer holidays put a lot of pressure on me because I had family commitments and work commitments where we were away from the shop for a bit and it was it was hard because there was lots of work that was piling up and I just didn't have a chance to do it we've got through the backlog now there's I think we've just about covered every device in the store like everything's safe now like we've not got devices what have been here three weeks a month we've we've, we've got it so in light of sorting that shit out We've gone through and we've worked on like systems. We're going to make things work. What were I talking about? Like, oh yeah, so like just a massive organization in the shop and everything seems to be good again. Like I was driving to work the other day and I actually felt good about coming to work. Not that I'd ever felt really bad, but you just like, I'm going to go into the shit hole again, the mess. Yeah, we don't know, we don't know where anything is. And there were situations where customers are coming in and saying, oh, you've got a part in for me. And then we couldn't find it. We just didn't know where it was and like, even like the cupboard under the stairs, the Harry Potter cupboard, we've sorted that out. And we've not just got parts everywhere. We've not just got scrap devices everywhere. We've not got a mixture of scrap devices and customer devices and devices for sale in the same box that we don't know what it is. So now we've got a system. We're going to stay organized. I'm working on the accessories now. We're going to be ordering in the 16 for Monday. So we'll have the accessories in for iPhone 16 very soon. It's all just busy, exciting time. Just about to start QQ4, ready for Christmas. Get ready. That just about sums up the podcast this week. Lots to digest, lots to talk about. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this iOS 18 update, and I will see you next week where we'll talk some more about that. Goodbye.